Is it raise your hand? Raise your hand if Jennifer Walters could step on you. Cool. We, I'm, I'm glad in. we solved that. Yeah, raise your hand if Good. you would pay her to do it. Oh yeah. <laughs> everybody, I'm Danny Danger, this is Chris Cox, this is Martin Nofro, and we are here to talk about our favorite female superheroes. Sure, or who yes. identify as female. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So uh, we are Crossover Event. Chris, you want to tell us a little bit about Crossover Event, what we do? Yeah, Crossover Event, we are part of Screen Fanatic. Uh, which is also part of bellofloftsouls.net. Hey. You can see us on YouTube, which I presume you figured that out by now if you're watching this. Uh, I'm from oneofus.net. I'm from doubletoasted.com. And I'm from the circle of hell that has yet to be named. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name for a website. Thank you. I actually put it on my business card. I just had them printed. They look really nice. <laughs> but we like to talk about, you know, geeky stuff. We like movies. Sure. We like TV shows. We like video games. We like role playing. And, like comic, comic, books. and comic, comic books. And comic books. And comic books. And this week we are talking about really more comic oriented stuff, although we'll cross over to some point to other things, hey. which is that we're talking about, as you said, best female superheroes, yeah. best identified female. Our favorite female, female superheroes. Yeah. Our favorite. Because there, there's so many, and it's hard to say yeah. what's best and what's not, because everybody's going to say, what about? But these are some of our favorites. Yeah. yeah, and I felt like we had to, because I'm really liking She-Hulk right now, Love and it. I think it... I, I'm like, God, I've been waiting so long for this. I loved and grew up with John Byrne's run on this character and Jessica mm. Walters doing, not Walters, sorry. That's Archer. <laughs> Jennifer Walters. Jennifer Walters, yeah. thank you. Why does that get me every single it's, time? It's, it's, a, it's an easy mistake to yeah, make. It is. See, that's so funny because when I first got into comics, one of the first comics I read was Dan Slott's run. Oh, yeah, on great Shield. one. And I just, Terrific. oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I just started reading that. And, oh. was it, was and, and, and honestly, as much as everybody's attaching Byrne's run to the TV show, when I read Dan Slott's run, of, I feel like this is taken directly from oh, that. No, they said, Very much so. They said it's kind of, it's more Dan Slott, but some John Byrne. Okay. Although you know? she hasn't gotten slutty yet, and I know it's coming, but that was a big part of Dan, Slott, so Dan Slott's arc where like she was just like, yeah, party time. And actually, that's one of the things I'm missing it. from the show. Where, yeah. Because she's all very like, well, I'm having a hard time dating. Whereas from Dan Slott's run, she's like, listen, you. Come here, we're gonna do this. Yes, yes. <laughs> which and is, I do think that we see that in one of the upcoming episodes. Which is as much as oh, yeah. you know, you might have the fanboys out there like grumbling, like oh, this show, blah 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 blah. That is the fantasy. Is it? Raise I'm your sorry, hand. Am I, am I, am raise I, your hand if Jennifer Walters could step on you. Cool. We, I'm, I'm glad in, we solved that. Yeah, raise your hand if you would pay her to do it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna show out on you. <laughs> <laughs> I can miss a mortgage payment. It's fine. <laughs> you can pay people. To I'll, you. I'll explain it to the bank. It'll be cool. They'll, yeah. be, they'll, they'll, they'll be with um, me. Well, watch, yeah. Watching this actress who's like already we've seen on Orphan Black who's Tatiana Maslany capable of playing so many oh. different types oh, of yeah. characters and that you know, because, like the mousy almost, but still like, because of her size, and they really play up how small she is as a human in here, and she is really small. I've interviewed her. I was gonna say I couldn't no, no, tell no. if there was like some camera angle work no. being done. No, 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 no. Yeah, tiny. no, no. We've we've met her, and she's tiny. Tiny, because because initially yeah. I was like, well, she's a great actress. I can see why you hire for that. But for She-Hulk, but then to go the size difference is like, okay. I Watching it. her come into her own, that that idea of like her, you know, dealing with this idea of like, now I'm super tall. And the camera keeps doing these angle, point of view angles mm -hmm. of like, we look down. You I look think up, the idea of like, for me as someone who's like moved in the world as like a female presenting person, um, the idea of growing stronger and more intimidating as someone tries to intimidate or harass you is on so many levels appealing to me. It's entertaining, it's great. I was so happy when the first episode just spelled it out. Like, yeah, Bruce, this isn't a problem for me because I have to do it every goddamn day. Oh, I love that. And I just, I, like, ugh. Thank you. I, that that yes. was one of my favorite moments in the whole series. Dudes on the internet are like, all oh, that forced feminism. And I'm like, no. the only thing forced about it is that y'all are forced enough to put us to put up with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, all the, t oh boy. So so often these kind of things come up in, in these movies and it's, I, I won't say it's weird, but it's disappointing that so when something when something like this, that there's pushback on it. I like when they say it's forced, like the whole thing isn't fiction and made up. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. No, no, no. Because like, I, I get it. It's, it's like, oh, they're just pushing an agenda. But it's like, no, that actually fit within this. And it gave 
this whole series identity. Yeah, and, what, I, and I love that. And it explains. What, her, also, you you're tall and you you got you 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 got some, yeah, you got some, some guns, guns going on. That's part of so, why I really so like. I don't know she how Hulk. you identify with, with with Jennifer more than she Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I love the bit where she's like, "Look, I I don't have as much problem controlling my anger as you because I've been doing it my whole oh, life. Oh. I like, work. No, I'm doing this on purpose. <laughs> I work in a male dominated like high power industry. What do you think? I've spent my whole life rehearsing." Swallowing down anger, I'm gonna be okay. And I was like, For real? How does that not make sense? Why? How is that forced? That's uh, everything honestly, about that. The only way like, you could get through being a corporate lawyer is that you would have to be white, male, and rich yeah. before you even got hired. Yeah, dude, I've worked as a bartender and as a female bartender. That's like, I mean, it's oh, it's across it's even. across the board in every field. Yeah. That's what makes it amazing and great. Yeah. I mean, she says like this is my field, but she also says I have to do this to avoid being murdered. And like mm -hmm. nobody in her office job is going to murder her. Like probably, well, well, hopefully but, not anymore. Hey. But yeah, like it's <laughs> she does sort of touch on that it's about her job, but sure. she also elaborates that like it's not just her job; it's her life, it's her identity, it's the skin she wears. And I just, ugh. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I need my not, smell not, 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 not to. I at, at the at the expense of quoting Mike Pence. But as a father of daughters, I get it. <laughs> well, there are many different. I quit. <laughs> there are many different definitions of what femininity, femininity is, and ultimately, it's as different as there are people. It's whatever you, as a person, want it to be, and this has been represented in many different ways throughout the history of comic books, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Certainly, She-Hulk is not the only version of this, and we're here to talk about some of our other favorite female superheroes, and possibly why you know that's in interesting based on that of, a, of like this is a different version of ex expressing your femininity but still heroes still having power sure so uh, Danny why don't you get us started <laughs> oh boy okay so I have to say that like when we first pitched this idea I was like oh my god I'm kind of rolling my eyes because we'll never do an episode about like the best male superheroes because it's sort of assumed right um, but then I got to kind of thinking about it and um, I am you know I'm somebody who is I'm gender fluid um, so so I use she pronouns, I use he pronouns, but I'm, I'm most uncomfortable with they. Like I just am too much gender to fit into one person's body. Um, and it took me a really long time to figure that out. It took me a really long time to kind of figure out like what womanhood was and what masculinity was. And I think one of the key characters that was a part of me sort of defining what femininity meant to me and, and how that interacted with this masculine part of my personality and what all of that sort of meant and kind of gave me a way to help parse that out was Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. um, Wonder Woman was my entry into the comic book world. I did a photo shoot with a friend and then afterwards he was like, okay, I know you like cartoons. I'm going to put on this movie for you and you're going to love it. And it was the Wonder Woman movie with Carrie Russell and Nathan Fillion mm -hmm. doing the voices. Oh, oh okay. the animated. animated. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, that didn't happen in real life. Yeah. I'm so sorry to get nice. everyone excited. It would have been nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah. And, and I just loved and enjoyed the way that movie was handled so much. Mm -hmm. The way that she kind of has this sort of idea of what feminism is and what it means to be a woman in the vacuum of being on an island with only people who identify as women. Mm. Um, and then what it meant to be out in the world and what it meant to challenge the stereotypical gender roles that she stepped into and what it meant to also kind of move in that space and, and, and just sort of navigate those things. And um, I still watch that movie a lot and kind of walk away with something a little bit different every time I do. I think do. It, it's held up as one of the better of the DC animated it universe really films. Has. And it was one of the earlier ones too, yeah. but it's really good. Yeah, Not the earliest, but it was one of the first ones that wasn't directed by Bruce Timm. Yes. Yeah, that was uh, Laura, Lauren Montgomery. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, and I love, she's done some other stuff. I think she did uh, the Green Lantern. Uh, which, which one? one? Um, uh, <laughs> it's been a bunch. Not Emerald Knights. First Flight? Oh, First Flight. Oh, I think, yeah, yeah, she directed yeah. First Flight yeah. as well, which was also another, like, longtime favorite of yeah, mine. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's, her name is, uh, her name is stamped Despite over. the live action Green Lantern, most of the animated Green Lanterns have actually been pretty good. Okay. Especially, yeah. especially First Flight. Yeah. That was one where you're like, when you made this live action Green Lantern, you didn't want to just take from this because 
they pretty laid it, they laid it out pretty well. If they had followed that script, it would have been great. But yeah. also, like Christopher Maloney was just a skosh too old to play that role, but, yeah. which is a shame because he was born to play it. I love him. Yeah, um, but they, but, but they so made much. that movie all CGI, so it wouldn't have yeah. even mattered. I this is another episode, but I have my own feelings on that Green Lantern movie, and I really think I will die on this hill. But I think the cowards at Warner Brothers DC need to just make that movie canon, like they did Incredible Hulk, right. and give Ryan Reynolds an opportunity to redeem himself because he is really funny and actually was a really great Hal Jordan. That movie was just really poorly let, written and yeah. really... Let him stay Hal Jordan but make the next movies about John. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, bring it Absolutely. that way. Because in the first Deadpool, he totally made fun of that movie. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And it's a shame that Ryan Reynolds can't go back and play that role because Deadpool killed him. Uh -huh. um, By the know, way, rest the, in peace. the new animated Green Lantern is excellent, which is finally the story of Hal turning, turning evil. Oh, I haven't, oh, I haven't seen that yeah, one, yet. New one I just watched oh, the animated yeah. series yeah. and really enjoyed that. Anyway, back to Wonder Woman. Okay, okay, but anyway, back to Wonder Woman. Um, yeah, and so the, that was what brought me, that was what got me in the door to an actual literal comic book shop. I was like, I want to read a Wonder Woman comic. And of course, like when you go into a comic book shop for the very first time, chances are you are 90% likely to pick up something random that's maybe not good or, or, or that is just something that's like maybe not as iconic Sure. Of, you know, you don't know what you're doing your first time, man. Absolutely. Yeah. So I picked up one story by Gail Simone, which I liked, and I'm and I do enjoy Gail Simone's work. Sure. Um, but I don't think that any of her particular run, Wonder Woman runs are like anything for the history books. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I did enjoy it. It was nice popcorn reading, and then I picked up, um, and I picked up some of the older comics, and I also really enjoyed those. Um, but I think it was uh, New Frontier. It was a New Frontier. Masterpiece. That Was it the Brian Azzarello? No. no. New Frontier yeah. is Darwin Cook. Darwin Cook. Yeah. Oh! Oh, that new... Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's the story yeah, of like the monster in the yes, center yes, of the planet. Yes, yes, yes so, sure. so there's a yeah. monster in the center of the planet. There's a wonderful animated version of this comic that yeah. looks almost exactly like the comic book they pages. They did a great it's job with it. Very yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Wonderfully acted. Lucy Lawless does the voice of Wonder yeah. Woman. Which She's is a obvious. Whole, yeah. She yeah, is a course. whole head taller than Superman. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, but... Everything after that point in the DCU has her shorter than Superman, and it's a lie. It is slander. <laughs> it is unacceptable, and I will not. And I will not have. I it. love the idea that her as an Amazon and all Amazons would be taller than your yes. average guy. And sure. Superman's yeah. just from Krypton. There's like so Kryptonians are not known know for being Amazons. super tall. Like, Amazonians should be really you? like six four, six five. You know? Yes. Yeah. Like, exactly. I want Gwendolyn Christie to feel at home on this set. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Well, she's loose first, so it's okay. <laughs> the she's gonna get this all is a different. This is a whole different video, y'all. Yeah. Uh, but this on you porn this section. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, Wonder Woman is. Uh, I mean, for better or for worse, she's had some some. Um, you know, she's not like. Um, there's a thing about DC where like you have these characters that are like very godlike and very legendary, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times they're like long running series sort of fail to keep up with that persona. Yeah. And I think Wonder Woman has sort of fallen guilty to that she or you know fallen prey to that. She also falls prey to the you know DC comic book problem similar to like well, I know she she just doesn't really have like a strong one very strong notable adversary. True. Which also kind yeah. of bums me out. Yeah. Like, I don't... Right, right, because her big adversary is Cheetah. Yeah. And you always feel like, if it really came down to a fight, she should be able to, to dispatch Cheetah pretty easily. Pretty yeah. Easily. Yeah, yeah. They have the hardest time figuring out how to give her antagonists. They really do. Yeah. Um, because, like, at the end of the day, who wants to fight a bad bitch like Wonder Woman? <laughs> um, I've always been but... baffled why they haven't made her more against some other pantheon. Yeah. You know, of oh, gods. Yeah, I've yeah. always felt like, why don't they create another pantheon there? It's like the bad pantheon. Yeah. Make that it blows my mind that she, versus, uh, yeah. Minerva. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Especially like a Justice League Dark kind of crossover, like her mm. going into hell, her getting into sort of like the, the Greek pantheon. Yeah, like there's so much there that I feel like. Wonder Woman versus Sif. That would be the thing. Yeah, yeah. 
but not Sif wouldn't be a bad guy. But, you know. Well, nobody has to be a bad guy. No, no, no. I'm I mean, just I mean whenever, whenever you get two factions of, of superheroes together, they have a misunderstanding. Right. Every okay. time. And they yes. fight they until they go punching. like, oh, wait, we have more in common maybe, than we do. Maybe we should have talked. Like, <laughs> yeah, to be, yeah. To be fair, See, like, to Peter Wonder Parker. Wonder Woman is a diplomat, so I don't think that would ever happen. To be her. fair to every spider that hyphen something, they're always like, wait, wait, can we talk? <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love it. Um, yeah, so... Gal Gadot's first Wonder Woman movie, great, 1984. I am owed a personal apology for that. It was a garbage movie. It was Absolute trash. Garbage. Yeah. Um, I am not a fan of calling things garbage. It was garbage. But that was yeah, garbage. garbage. It was garbage, yeah. Garbage. Well, uh, Martin, we gotta, we've got to move on. I, I know. We can talk Sorry. about Wonder Woman for a whole I, day. I, I, are you serious? I feel like that was the whole show. <laughs> no, no. That's your turn. <laughs> Martin? Okay. Um, so my, uh, first up for of my picks is going to be Helen Parr, a.k.a. Elastigirl, mm. from the Incredibles movies. Uh, she really holds it down. Now, I always have affinity for wife characters in things anyway. Uh, I don't like the way that dads went from being assholes to workaholics to now doofuses yeah. <laughs> uh, or man children. But with Bob Parr, it kind of fit because he was kind of trying to live his old glory. And she was there being the grounding. He's also not dumb enough where he can't learn lessons. And yes. it's always yes. about yes. him learning and, and growing. And he's supportive as a of her. He's like supportive. He, he's yeah. there for her. He's no, involved they, with they his have, kids. Exactly. It's, it's one of the few movies that portrays marriage realistically. Yes. Like when they when they fought, I was like, okay, the, the, these are fights. The, these are marriage fights. The people who wrote this are married. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And as much as the first movie seemed like it was his movie, it really was about the, the entire family. Mm. Now, when we get to the second movie, and even though I don't think it's as good, what is good about it is how much it focuses on her as Elastigirl going solo mm -hmm. and being the most competent member of the group. And Amen. The, uh, the the Incredibles were, Incredibles were always based on the Fantastic Four. And even though she has the powers of Mr. Fantastic, she's kind of based on Sue, you know, Richards, the yeah. Invisible Girl, really? or Invisible Woman. Because I always understood it, like the way that it was, I saw some behind the scenes thing that was like everybody's powers is sort of based on the stereotypical cookie cutter version of, or what we think of that version. So like you're looking at a wife and a mother, obviously she's Elastigirl because she's having to do 14 different things at mm -hmm. once. You know, and and like hang with these kids and do this and that and the other. So like, any and and any any mom in America looks at Elastigirl and was like, "Ooh, I feel that." Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. It was uh, she's portrayed in that way that shows that yeah, that, yeah. Besides being able to, you know, she sacrificed her career to raise the kids, but when it comes down to it. She's just as potent as she was. Now that, that you was. phrase it that way, it seems really weird that Reed is the one who got the stretchy powers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, lo I love that she can stretch at will. She chose to have an awesome dump truck ass, is all I'm saying. It's funny because, in, yeah, in the first movie, it's like, oh, yeah, she's, she, she's booty, attractive. Booty, mom, booty, booty. And only certain members of us were able to go, like, oh, she's actually pretty hot. But with the second one, man, it is out on display. Yes, it is. And yes, she became a full-on sex Get symbol it, girl. to the point where if you look at porn, not that I do, but no. if you do, What's porn? it's either... There it's is a, a last year it's, it's, porn. It's, it's all about uh, stepmoms. Um, 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 Just well, put in step. It's, it's, step it's, whatever. It's, it's stepmoms. <laughs> it's, uh, what's your name for Scooby-Doo? Um, Velma. Velma from Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Legit. And Elastigirl. Yeah, that's Legit. true. And, and yeah, no, watching even the second movie, I was just like, um... Is everybody seeing what so, I see? Okay, what's funny is that the first one tracks for my for my porn history because that's really ubiquitous. But those last two things tell me a lot about you, Martin. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's explore. I'm not blaming you. Yeah, In fact, yeah, yeah. Kudos, my well, my, was, my friend. I, fair, it's I, more I, about I think, the it, I, ads I, I think it was more like her changing the outfit. Like the outfit really showed off what she had. Yeah. And every time she would sit on that motorcycle and her ass would be like prominent in the camera, you're like. Okay, shit, I can't pretend like I don't see what I just see right now. <laughs> now you understand how I feel about Nightwing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank oh, no, you. no, 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 we, we get that. I, I, yeah. I, I, I never Best that. Best booty in the DCU. But, you know, I I, I, I almost don't even want to bring that up cause it, to, to lessen what she does. Because even if you took that out, I don't know how you could, 
But uh, <laughs> she, she she really is one of the best superheroes that, that that's out there. She's the 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 heart of that group. Yes, you know? I mean she is the one who always ends up pulling it all together. Mm-hmm. Who's just like, oh my god, you guys, seriously, fine, <laughs> I'll stretch again. I know, I know. I and, that- and they always want to make the 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 female, or especially the wife characters in movies, the killjoy. And she's not. But she, yeah, she's not. Yeah. But I do think that there is, it is interesting to observe sort of, even from a positive light, this um, trope that like the woman in the group, the grown woman in the group is always going to be the one who has to be the, the voice of reason or yeah. the corralling voice. No. Um, and that's a really, and, and I do think that that is a valuable observation on the way that we perceive womanhood. Socially, well, I mean, it was one of the things that made me fall in love with. Um, I don't think it's wrong. I just no, think it's important. It, like, <laughs> I, I, it, it made me as we were sitting there in South by Southwest watching the screening. It made me love bridesmaids. So I was like, wait a minute, who needs help he, loving he, here bridesmaids? We, here we have the the grown white, <laughs> attractive white women, or at least woman who doesn't have her shit together, and we never see this in movies. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, Y'all need a movie of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Next step, Martin and I film a movie about Danny's life. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do it. <laughs> a crossover event, the movie. All right, Chris, you have, you have four four like, minutes no, no, no. for your first choice. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Crazy Jane from uh, Doom Patrol. Now, admittedly, this is 80s. It's Grant Morrison when she first came out. I think it was the second issue of his run when she was first introduced. There, oh, really? I didn't realize yeah. that, that they identified that. It's way. a great day to be a they. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Crazy Jane was immediately one of the most likable parts of the whole thing. And was I was actually kind of mad at the time because as a kid, I'm just a, still like a late teens trying to write my own stuff. And I'm like, I have this idea because in the 80s, multiple personalities, which now are known as dissociative personality mm-hmm. disorder, were everywhere. It was yeah. like Billy Milligan and Sybil and all these people. Like It was like a big thing. Like, oh my God, this is Sybil amazing. Sybil was huge. Cool. Sybil was huge. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Sally, uh, Sally Field. Sally right? Field, yeah, yeah. Yeah, played the role in the movie version of it. They're actually making a Billy Milligan miniseries now that's coming out. I mean, he's uh, the most interesting out of all. Oh, I don't know Billy Milligan. Oh, dude, yeah. He's the many minds of Billy Milligan. It was incredible. But anyway, so this comic book version, she's got multiple personalities then my idea was like what if each personality when they took over their like their being had a different superpower what a cool idea this is that character on doom patrol and, <laughs> and well really cool the problem is is that she's unstable you never know what's going to happen she might revert to a personality that's kind of evil she might revert to a personality that is terrified and goes and hides in a corner when they made the television adaptation of it which i still think is one of the best things dc has done in a long time that they did such a good job of sort of updating this, of making her really exploring who she is as a person, of her really focusing on the what they call integration with this, the mm. idea of like slowly integrating all this. I mean, they're really going by real psychological texts of how people deal with people with dissociative personality disorder, which takes a very, very like decades long time sure. to do. But focusing on that, she's a fascinating character. And the idea that she's dealing with all these different versions of femininity with that lie within her makes her so fascinating. There are all these different, there's like the prissy perfect girl and there's the scared abused girl and there's the, I'm the boss girl and there's like all these different ones. I don't need my internal out. family systems uh, <laughs> just attacked in this way. <laughs> like. Or or uh, applauded. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, or that. Uh, it's, it's a really great character that I... I kind of hope DC I mean you know everybody knows what's going on with the Warner Brothers right now it's like everything is like woo up in the air <laughs> but in the sense that we don't yeah, we're like it's it's all, they're like it's all reality shows from now on mm. <laughs> Uh, it's just but, David uh, says I, I just, walking around kicking people in the shins I want the, uh, right I feel like metaphorically I've been kicked in the shins but Ready for this to go on to a next season. It's just really, really good. I wish we could, Grant Morrison would, would go back and write more of it. Like if Grant Morrison came back and said, I'm doing a new run on Doom Patrol that picks up where I left off, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go start start buying separate issue comics again. <laughs> uh, she, 
she is wonderful. And, it, like, she probably should count as a they because she has male personalities, too. So, like, I mean, she doesn't identify that way in the books, per se, outwardly that I've seen. I've not read the post-Grant Morrison stuff. Well, I was going to but... say what's interesting is that, like, Grant Morrison didn't necessarily have the language to identify themselves that way at that sure. time. Neither did I. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, who knows? Like, that's the interesting thing about kind of revisiting some of this stuff and yeah. and talking about it is seeing, like, what do we have the language now to to sort of speak on and the experience do we have to speak on now that maybe we didn't have before mm. well we're gonna lightning round round too because we all had a lot to say so danny yes. red sonia may not technically have superpowers but the whole like i'm She's not gonna badass. i'm not gonna sleep with a man unless he can beat me in battle and also i can take on conan like come on she's super powered i would never get to sleep with red sonia i'd just say like it would never happen i would just lose and it'd be the well end. i would either you, get you, to sleep you, with her or i would die trying sleep with her unless you beat her in battle that's what she said. Yeah. 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 So, no, I can't. I would not beat her in battle. I would not beat this chair in battle. I think I so. would maybe get lucky. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was both, chess both times. or connect four. Right. Then. Nobody ever then, said that. Then, then her ass is mine. We're yeah, nobody play, ever said the playing the, field. We're playing Monopoly, but I get to be the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I will take you down, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> What's that with the game from Sandman? <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's play the game from Sandman, Red Sonia. <laughs> exactly. You yeah, know, I, I like Red Sonia too. I always felt bad that the movies did not do a great job. Right? There's the one. supposed to be no, a new was one. A, there was a second one that was direct to TV oh, at some point. Well, does that really? Yeah. But there was supposed to be a new one, but I think it got canceled. No, they just they just announced this did week they? a new casting. Oh, did they? Uh, okay. The actress who was originally slated to play Red Sonia had to drop out because of scheduling things, so they have recast her. Um, they have uh, the her sister is going to be played by the girl one of the girls who played Kate the girl who played Kate Kane and Batwoman. Uh, mm. One of the other characters is going to be played by the guy who the is in King? Umbrella Academy. Yes. Okay. Uh, the blonde. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the other guy who's going to be in it is uh, the girl who's going to play Red Sonia starred in Revenge, the Shudder movie. Oh, such a great movie. Yes. Oh uh, I cannot remember her name, but yeah. I was like, I saw that trailer and I was like, okay, you can be my Red Sonia. If you have not seen, have you seen Revenge? No, I haven't. It's, it's on my list. fantastic. <clears throat> I have yeah. heard amazing things. Yeah, one of the um, best revenge movies ever yeah. made. It's and so then good. the guy who it plays Klaus in Umbrella Academy is also oh, going to be okay. in the show but, or in the movie, but they, I, we're not sure who oh he's going to be yet. Goodness, okay. I love Umbrella Academy <laughs> so much. I love him. I'm, I'm curious to see if they're going to make him a bad guy. One more guy. season. One more season. One more season. Yeah, I know Netflix is actually doing this new thing where they finish shows that they start. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of amazing. Now. I mean, right? They're like, talk well, to me when they renew Sandman. Hey, hey, we're not the most hated streaming network all of a sudden. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> oh my god! You what do we do? <laughs> uh, ooh, maybe we should finish ooh. seasons. I just finished season three of Lock and Key. I was like, they're not going to make season three of Lock and Key. Here it is. Like, well, you didn't uh, do a great job, but at least I got. Right. So, anyway, Martin, uh, how many we got left? Uh, we got Which one, lightning one, round? One, one, lightning oh, okay, round. okay. Uh, li lightning round. Ooh, I'm stuck because I want to mention Amanda McKee, who plays uh, who's a live wire from the Valiant universe. She's a technopath. Uh, look her up. Uh, but my answer is going to be uh, Laura X23, Wolverine's daughter slash clone. Didn't she just have Schnick. two? Right? She has two claws. Not yes, four. yes. She has uh, two claws from her hands <clears throat> and one from her feet. Right, right, right. And, uh, that and must make walking in crowds really nice. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 like, oh, oh, I just uh, bought these kicks. No, no, no. Oh, 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 <laughs> How did I get to the oh, front of the line at Disneyland the so quickly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> as long as you keep it in, you're, you're, you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, she was a character like Harley Quinn that was created in the animated series. And was just popular. It was no, such I a great know. idea. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. either. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she started in the X Men animated series. Wow. And made her way to comics, and just it was wow. just it was just one of those where it's like, man, this is such a good idea. Yeah. I liked her a lot in the comic book. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, even at a point where Wolverine was dead, one of the thirteen times he's been dead, yeah. and she took over as Wolverine. Yeah. And had a that great run. run. Is terrific. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic run. I mean, yeah. she had runs up and before that, but when when it was him gone and she was the Wolverine it was a great run it was one of those where when he came back I was like oh well okay yeah. I guess no I liked that she had like a lot of female friends as well that mm -hmm. she was dealing with that were big part of the the, the, the storyline mm -hmm. and it was sort of her figuring out who she is in a role that was defined as being a masculine role and yeah. I thought mm -hmm. that was really interesting well part I mean of that you, story. Could, you could go through just the entire X-Men cast of characters at, like Rogue 
Kitty Pride, Storm. Jean Grey, oh, yeah. Storm. Like, yeah. no, I mean, no, no, all of no, them no, no deserve team to be on the list. Female characters. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, like, I, if we awful. haven't mentioned X Men stuff before, this is just because there's just so goddamn just mad. so. Mad. I know, and I feel the same way about like the. I feel the same way about the DCU when you talk about Harley Quinn and Power Girl and mm-hmm. Poison Ivy and like Boob Window. The boob window I'm get one. has I'm get opened window. so many, so much opportunity for funny questions. Like, yeah. I, everything that they've done with that character. I adore and I've, I love her. I've liked Power Girl quite a bit. And I, yeah. I, at first I was like, come on, guy, singer, design. And then you actually read the books. You're like, these are pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> well, great. one of the great things about X23 was that even when she's introduced in the movies in Logan, it's such a great introduction. I was like, okay, even if you have read the comics, this has to intrigue you about the character. She's yeah. such a bad little bitch. I yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, she she really made that movie, mm-hmm. I think. I'm going to go for my third one. Uh, a character that I love partially because I love film noir. I love, like, the you know, that uh, the hard-bitten, hard-drinking character that's just like, oh, I'm tired of your shit. Yeah. Grizzled. But the idea of making a superhero character that doesn't even want to be a superhero is tired of the shit is Jessica Jones. I was going to say, is this Jessica? Jones. Created by Brian Michael <laughs> Bendis for the series Alias and quickly took off in a huge way. Oh, yeah. As a much beloved character. Ended up marrying Luke Cage mm-hmm. in the comic books. They have a child together. <laughs> well, it's interesting because so from her first miniseries, it was like he was like a one night stand mm-hmm. and they have pretty graphic anal sex. And, yes, they do. And she's like, yeah, it kind of hurt me some, but I was just looking to punish myself. And mm-hmm. it just seemed like that was it. And then to have him come back and they have a full-on relationship where they get married and have a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Well, and then the fact that she becomes, like, the mentor to, the to, to like, the young Avengers. Like, it's a whole, mm-hmm. it's a whole, like, a whole circular thing, thing yeah. path for her where first she's, like, fuck everybody and then she ends up at, like, I'm going to influence this next generation of heroes. And like, she's still cynical gross. and interesting and she's the one who often offers the viewpoint of, like, <clears> come on, don't don't listen to Tony Stark. Come on, or whatever it is. Anybody you know? who's saying don't listen to Tony Stark is good in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> we have this conversation. I hate that guy. But as well, like on the the tele, uh, Netflix's version of her show, uh, Kristen Ritter, who I just adore. She owned that character. She owned that mm-hmm. character to pieces. And it, it was, I think, the only flawless season of the Netflix shows. Like, I love mm-hmm. some of the Daredevil ones. Mm-hmm. I love the first Punisher. But I, I think that first season, season of Jessica season Jones is with flawless. David I agree. Tennant as the Purple Man, who ranks in the top five of Marvel. The only flaw is that he me. almost ruined the Tenth Doctor for me. He was so good. I he was so good. He, he almost was so the doctor. I know. Yeah. I was like, and also, you keep going. Oh, you know, he'd be good in this role for Marvel. David Tash. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. He's Mephisto. Yeah, but then he plays the devil in Good Omen. So at that yeah. point, you're like, all right. Yeah. Well, not the devil, but well, yeah, a, like devil. a demon. A demon. A, demon. Uh, yeah. a likable demon. Oh, yeah. he was so good. A dancing demon. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, but Jones is just like this fascinating broken character that we watch slowly heal and become a better person over time but never mm-hmm. losing who makes what makes her who she is sure. sometimes it's re- it really floors me that brian michael bendis and the creators of that show managed to write about surviving sexual assault in a way that is so visceral and so connective mm-hmm. um like i, I don't want to like dig into of anyone's personal experience or anything but like nine times out of ten when you look at a room that's you know equal parts men and women you're going to have a lot more women who have experienced sexual assault of and course. so to see and you have a lot of men depending in depending on how catholic that room is well and you also <laughs> you also have a lot of men who write about sexual assault and yeah. just just do it in a ham-handed fucked up like just not harm reductive kind of way mm. and the jessica jones story um is is much more visceral than any of those works that I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but is ten times more relatable and understandable and empathetic uh, and real. God, I know there's people who just actively don't like Ryan Michael Bendis that much, but he, buy wrote, him a beer. he wrote a few straight up masterpieces in comics, and one of them is Alias with Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. Well, for sure, for he, sure. He that and his Daredevil. Of, run. He was one of the last creators who created new characters that have endured to go on to other things and translate over to movies. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and not everything he's written has been a gem, but the stuff he did when he was on, he was very much on. I know we're seeing... And at the time he came into the industry, he was a breath of fresh air. I know we're Mm -hmm. seeing Daredevil in the season of She-Hulk going on. Uh, The... 
line of it was that Daredevil, his his role was Daredevil was looking for an old ally. Come on, be Jessica Jones. Please, please bring Jessica Kristen Ritter back oh, in. Please. Oh, no, no. There's already been, like, mentioned that. It's not? that. No, no, that her and... Uh, John Bernthal as a Punisher will be coming back into the. Oh, MCU. that's Good. great! Yeah. I'm happy, and yeah. you know, bring back Mike Coulter too. Just not. Oh, the, I bring know. back everybody but Iron Fist. Everybody but Iron Fist. No, no, the but thing about Mike, Mike, Mike Coulter, Mike Coulter is to but. he's he's to me he's Luke Cage. Even when I read yeah. recent comics, I see Mike he, Coulter. Yeah, yeah. However, he's another Mike character. Coulter he's is another on actor a network CBS show that is popular, so he's making CBS money. Evil, right? Yeah, evil. Yeah, he's like at that. And I love that for him. However, yeah. if he could just if he could just grace us with his appearance, like even if it's just him making know, Jessica a sandwich and sending her um, out the yeah. door, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, just, <laughs> yeah. just a little glimpse um, of your pretty face. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're gonna wrap this episode up. Thank you for watching. We could obviously talk about so many more. I know. Like Ms. So, Marvel so many. and Adam Eve, Girl Storm, and Adam Eve, and yes. yes, and Kitty Pryde, uh, and just yes. like endless. I, like there was so many. I started making Madam lists, Sanity, and I just Zatana. gave up at a certain point. I'm like, look, there's just. So if you many. play a video yeah. game, and you have the choice to play Storm. Take it. Oh, she's always she, the she, yeah. She's got the best power <sighs> set. Always, always. But I'm Chris from One of Us .net. I'm Martin Thomas, who you can see over at DoubleToast.com. And I'm Danny Danger from Bulls and Screen Fanatic. Like us, please. The Screen Fanatic thing. Like us. Please subscribe. Do. Share it with your friends. And also, we have a podcast we have version a podcast? of the show what? now. What? We're doing that now? Yeah, we, are, we are doing that now. Or you can listen to our show in just a podcast version. That is available all over the place in all the various streaming services that you might use. Apple, Spotify, mm. what have you, where you can listen to this that way. Like, you don't have wow. time to watch videos. I think videos. it's on Bulls, too. It's on, yeah. It is on uh, Bellevue's. Uh, <laughs> Bell <Vlos laughs> okay, so wait. <laughs> we've got written media. We've got podcasts. We've got video. We yeah. are inevitable. You can't